The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples arrived at Bethsaida, people brought to him a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. Putting spittle on his eyes, he laid his hands on the man and asked, Do you see anything? Looking up, the man replied, I see people looking like trees and walking. Then he laid hands on the man's eyes a second time, and he saw clearly. His sight was restored, and he could see everything distinctly. Then he sent him home and said, Do not even go into the village. The Gospel of the Lord. So an interesting component of today's miracle. Well, there are two, a couple, two or three. One is that he took him outside the village to do it, away from everybody. And, uh, and later, Jesus, Jesus condemns Bethsaida. He says, if the miracles done in you would have been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have converted, but you didn't. And so I wonder about Jesus taking this man away from the town to do the miracle. Um, but the other component that's interesting and a little bit unique is that it, it took two shots to get him, you know. First he laid hands on him and he was, could see some, but then he, he laid hands on him again. And doesn't the grace of God work in us like that sometimes? Doesn't it, doesn't it a, a process that over and over again, our Lord is touching, healing, and bringing us from darkness to sight? And so those elements. But I, I really want to focus a cup for a couple of reasons on our first reading today, uh, James, the letter of James. The letter of James kind of stands alone. It, it's his only letter. It's very practical, lots of practical advice in it. Uh, I would really ask you to seriously consider it because we're going to be reading it every day at Mass. I think this is the second or third day that we've been reading James. And it, as long as we don't have a feast day or something, we're going to keep reading it uh, almost all the way through. So it would be worth your while to go home, get your Bible, and just read the whole thing and prepare yourself to hear it proclaimed at mass a little bit. All right, that's one thing. So the letter of James, full of very practical, concrete advice. Not a lot of really high theology, although there's some in there for sure, but stuff like everyone should be quick to hear and slow to speak. Okay, so listen more than you speak, James is saying. But he goes on to say, this is the one who's saying that, you know, I'm talking, I get out all the talk. So listen more than you speak. So he says, but... Right after that, he says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. As important as it is to listen more than you speak, it's more important than to simply listen, we have to do. And so he's tying these things together. And really we're getting further away from a lot of talk does nothing. So listen more than you talk, but do, and don't just listen. So our religion has to affect our actions. And that's what he gets to the bottom line down here. If anybody thinks his, he's religious, but he doesn't bridle his tongue, okay, getting back to talking too much. If you think you're religious, but you can't control your tongue, you're fooling yourself. Okay, number one, if you think you're religious, you think you're connected to God, you think you have a great faith and you can't control your tongue, you are deceived in your heart, your religion is in vain. And then he says, religion that is pure and undefiled is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to be unstained by the world. So, we have to listen more than we talk. We have to do more than we talk. And we have to uh, recognize that our faith is, of course, listening to God's word, but then, and worshiping God, but uh, then also, you know, concretely living our lives in such a way that we care for others. 
you know, and so it's a, it's a great challenge. It's a great challenge. May I say it again? It's a great challenge. And so today, Lord, we pray, lay your hands on us that we can see and do. Lay your hands on us that we can control our tongue. James is going to go on to say the tongue is like the rudder of a ship. It's little, but it steers the whole thing, you know. So we pray again that we can control our tongue, listening to God's word and acting on God's word.